All right, we're going to cover a big topic today, virally mediated skin lesions. Let's get started, as we always do, with a case. An 11-year-old healthy girl presents with a rash. Her mother states that she's noticed a crop of round bumps appearing on her trunk and her thighs over the past several days, particularly in the groin and in her armpits. The mother appears more distressed about them than the daughter, who reports that they aren't bothering her at all. The patient denies any fevers, chills, myalgias, arthralgias, URI symptoms, or GI symptoms. The only thing is that some of the lesions are very mildly itchy. Social and family history, non-contributory, review of systems, as we've discussed, is totally negative, and her vital signs are completely normal. What we see on exam is numerous subcentimeter, skin-colored, dome-shaped papules scattered on her torso, and we can see some here in the picture on the right. They're also in the axilla, the crural folds, the proximal thighs. The lesions are very shiny in appearance, umbilicated, they're non-tender, and they're firm, sparing the palms and the soles. Importantly, there's no evidence of any mucosal lesions. So, let's look at a few key points here, highlighting some uh, prominent variables. Number one, they sound acute. They've just been coming on over the past couple days. Secondly, the pattern of skin involvement, they're located on her trunk and her thighs uh, and rather asymmetrically distributed. Skin inflammation, the fact that they're non-tender, they're not any pustules, it doesn't sound like there's any skin inflammation. And there really is no evidence of any skin involvement or systemic involvement based on a comprehensive review of systems. All right, so let's take a look at our differential diagnosis for this case. First up, a keratoacanthoma. Now, keratoacanthomas are indeed often described as dome-shaped firm papules. Well, there's one right there. And it does kind of look like what she has. And they are asymptomatic, which is also similar to what she has. But they don't appear in crops as they did in our patient. They are isolated, individual lesions with a central keratotic plug. Moreover, you'd almost never see one in an 11-year-old girl. It's a disease of folks over the age of 50. It represents a type of very low-grade malignancy, sometimes called a pseudocancer. Now, in defense of its appearance in this section on viral diseases of the skin, I would be remiss if I did not also mention that it is strongly associated with HPV. So it's a reasonable thing to have in this topic, but it's definitely not what she has. So let's exit out. Next up, varicella, also known as chickenpox. Well, it's one of the many viruses that can cause a so-called viral exanthem. Dozens of viruses can do this. Now, the lesions of chickenpox can come on fairly quickly, just like our patient did, over several days. And they might indeed look like round, dome-shaped lesions. But the lesions of chickenpox are actually fluid-filled vesicles, rather than these firm papules. And varicella, like most viral exanthems, is accompanied by symptoms. Fevers, malaise, myalgias, headaches, perhaps even a sore throat. I had it when I was 19. It was terrible. Now, less commonly, viral exanthems could have diarrhea, lymphadenopathy, maybe even splenomegaly or hepatomegaly. Either way, it doesn't sound like what she's got. Varicella lesions often transition from vesicles to pustules after a few days and ultimately will crust over and resolve spontaneously in less than 10 days. Just rounding out the discussion about varicella. So I think we can safely take it off of our list for now. Molluscum contagiosum. Now, this rash, which is also caused by a virus, the molluscum contagiosum virus, is relatively common in children. The lesions of molluscum contagiosum are described as dome-shaped papules, randomly distributed on the torso and extremities in an asymptomatic host. It looks like we'll need to keep this one on the list for now. Those lesions do look familiar. Next up, measles. Okay. This is yet another virus that causes a viral exanthem. And like varicella, it's typically accompanied by a viral prodrome with fevers, malaise, cough, conjunctivitis is common, and sinus congestion. Now, the lesions themselves are typically diffuse erythematous maculopapules, often referred to as morbilliform, um, because many other viruses look the same as measles. They're only a few millimeters in size, shown here in the top right picture, and they typically start on the face, spreading caudally with areas of confluence, often on the chest and the neck. Shown here in the bottom right is a reminder that measles is also associated with classic mucosal lesions called coplic spots. You'll definitely see these referenced on the boards. 
They are grayish, white, flat macules on an erythematous base, seen on the buccal mucosa adjacent to the molars, as shown here. Now, our patient had firm, dome-shaped papules, no mucosal lesions, not to mention she was completely asymptomatic. So I think we can definitely take this one off of our list. Lastly, let's talk about erythema multiforme. Remember, while we often think of erythema multiforme along with Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis associated with drug reactions, keep in mind that 90% of erythema multiforme eruptions are actually due to infections, most notably HSV and then mycoplasma would be second in place. Let's take a look at the next slide to review erythema multiforme in some more detail. So here's some pictures shown on the right of classic erythema multiforme uh, manifestations. It is an acute immune-mediated eruption with targetoid-shaped lesions depicted here. It's really gonna afflict young adults, predominantly under age 30, oftentimes under age 10. 90% of them, as I mentioned, are caused by infections like HSV and mycoplasma. Less than 10% of the time, it's caused by drugs. As we'll see in some other lecture talking about SJS and toxic epidermal necrolysis, that ratio is flipped with a small number causing, uh, caused by infections and a much larger number caused by medications. What you'll see here on the right are these targetoid erythematous papules that are symmetrically distributed on the hands and the face with a centripetal spread towards the torso. And you can note here the central clearing on some of those lesions. As a quick aside, sometimes I have trouble remembering what centripetal versus centrifugal means. Always remember centrifugal has F-U-G, and that makes me think of a fugitive. What are fugitives doing? They're running away. So centrifugal means spreading away from the body, as opposed to centripetal is running towards the body or coming towards the body. Important for us to remember that there are two subtypes of erythema multiform, the minor and the major subtype. The minor subtype is basically characterized by just the rash alone, whereas the major subtype is more like a Stevens-Johnson syndrome type of picture with mucosal involvement, uh, malaise, myalgias, fevers, other constitutional symptoms, and it's much more significant, of course. Our patient clearly, if anything, would be looking like a minor variant here. The way that it's managed, if it's mediated or caused by herpes simplex virus, you're going to want to treat that, withdraw whatever culprit medications could be playing a role, and you may need to add on systemic glucocorticoids, generally just for the major subtype of erythema multiform. So, having reviewed erythema multiform, I think we can safely take it off our list, as the lesions are wholly inconsistent with our patient's dome-shaped, skin-colored papules. All right, so it looks like we're left with molluscum contagiosum. So let's revisit the case and highlight some key points. All right, so molluscum contagiosum is very common in children and the immunocompromised, and our 11-year-old healthy girl would be a perfect case of uh, somebody getting molluscum contagiosum. The lesions here, the round bumps appearing on her trunk and thighs over the past several days, particularly the groin and the armpits. This is a classic presentation as well. Molluscum contagiosum lesions are asymmetric. They have a predilection for flexural creases, and they spare the palms, the soles, and there should not be any mucosal involvement. Next up, as we've highlighted countless times over the past few minutes, patients should be asymptomatic. They shouldn't be manifesting with a classic viral syndrome of myalgias and fevers, that sort of thing. Next up, the lesions, as we've said, are dome-shaped papules with this characterized central umbilication, a little bit of a hollowing out in the center of the lesion, and they're non-tender. 